hopefully this thing clears up so we can shoot some Astro. Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I've got a bit of a different video. It's not a vlog, it's a tech review kind of. I've got the brand new Pixel 5 from Google. This isn't going to be a full in-depth review. If you want to see one of those, there are plenty on YouTube already. This is more going to be a casual sit down type of video. So let's get into it. Let's start with a quick unboxing. I've already opened it because I've been using this for about a week now to test the camera. It comes with a charger, so yeah, unlike the new Apple iPhone. This one also comes with uh, earbuds. I think you need to check what country you're in because not all countries will supply earphones. It comes with a dongle in case you want to transfer files from an older phone or if you want to charge stuff. This is the Pixel 5. So let's start with the five new things I like the most about the Pixel 5. So the first thing I like about it is its size and weight. It comes in at a feather weight of 151 grams only, so it's really light. You have to kind of hold one in your hands to really get the feel of it. Even though it's this small, the battery size is still 4,000 milliamps, so it'll get you through the day. Compared to other smartphones, it's actually really light and easy to hold. It doesn't feel cheap at all, even though it's so light. It's constructed out of unibody aluminum, which is pretty cool. Alright, so the second thing I like the most about it is the fingerprint ID. I found that the position is quite natural to hold. It's easy to find even when you can't see it, so that's great. With the whole COVID situation, if you're wearing a mask, face ID sucks so bad. So I'm glad that Google brought in the touch ID. There is a bit of a relearning curve since I've used face ID for the last two, three years. I found myself staring at the phone, waiting for it to unlock and nothing happens. So then I remember I have to actually put my finger at the back and unlock it. That will take some getting used to, but I still prefer it over Face ID because fingerprint ID works all of the time. All right, so number three, I really like the screen of the phone. It's a six inch OLED panel. I like the uniform bezels and I really like that the hole punch camera at the front's really unobtrusive. It's just hidden away in the corner. I forget it's there most of the time. I think it's one of the nicest screens I've seen on a smartphone currently on the market. Number four, it finally comes with a wide lens. So the previous Pixel came with a normal lens and a tele lens. And thank God this comes with a wide lens. It makes such a big difference. So this is at one time zoom. And if I go wide, get so much more in frame. Then you can go two times, which is a digital zoom, but it works just as well with the Google AI. That's the wide lens. So that's one and get so much more in frame. And number five, the last point. So the camera module itself is quite small. It's basically non-existent. There's no camera bump, which is great. It allows you to put it flat on the table and it doesn't rock around. That being said, let's jump right into the camera specs and what I thought about the camera. I've been using the Pixel 5 to shoot video and photo for about a week now and I've taken it to multiple locations from shooting the Sydney Opera House to shooting Astro. Let me show you some of the samples. All right, so this was shot in 4K60 on the one times lens. This footage is unedited at normal speed and this is slowed to 40% speed. The 4K quality is really nice and sharp and the colors are great. This is with a quick grade over it. I find that the quality gets a little worse at two times zoom, but this is expected as it's a digital zoom. This is 4K60 uncolor graded at 40% speed. If you use a slow motion feature, it scales down to 1080p and the quality does take a little bit of a hit. So I'd recommend using the 4K modes in 60 frames and slowing it down in post. I have noticed with the active stabilization on, the frame does sway a little bit as you can see here. It's hunting left and right, but this can be fixed by just turning the stabilization off in the settings. All right, strong disclaimer. This phone does have IPX8 water resistance, but that's only in fresh water. It does not protect against salt water. Do not try this at home. All right, quick vlogging test. I'm out here shooting some samples with the Pixel 5 with Julian again. <laughs> I'm always with this guy apparently. But this is how the audio sounds. We're shooting front facing cam. I've actually got a selfie stick, so it's a bit extended. But if I were to hold it like with my hand, it'd be this close, which is fine. It's hiding again. But this is how the audio sounds. Uh, front facing cam with a selfie stick. And we're shooting Harbour Bridge at the Opera House, shooting some slow-mo stuff. Yeah! Alright, so we're in a darker scene now. I'm still using the back cam, 
the one time scam and let me know how this is. So typically smartphones, the sensors are a lot smaller, so low light situations are a bit more challenging, but got some nice blue neons behind me. How's the audio? Let me know. All right, so now I'm using the one time, so the normal lens and it should be better, I think in low light, but let me know. It's, it should be a lot tighter on my face. Hopefully I'm in frame. Yeah. One thing I did notice, however, is that the wide lens works for photo and video, but it doesn't work when you're shooting 4K 60. It's still there for video. You can go to the wide lens. There you go, we're in wide, normal, telly. Sometimes it's a bit jarring when you're in 4K 60 mode on the camera and then you, the option for the wide lens disappears. So in order to enable it, you have to go into settings, change it back to 4K 30, and then move it to the wide lens. One thing that is slightly annoying that I wish Google would bring is the ability to shoot 24 FPS. Currently it's only 30 and 60 FPS. So 24 would be a nice addition. Just gets that cinematic and smooth looking motion. I can't stress enough how much more opportunities the wide lens presents, allowing you to take photos that you couldn't before on the Pixel 4. While you are missing the telephoto lens now on the Pixel 5, the digital zoom in combination with Google's AI makes it look pretty good. With the help of Google's AI, the dynamic range is pretty good. There's full detail in all the shadows and the highlights of this image. There are two cool software features that Google have added to their Photos app. Number one is bokeh and depth control. If you go to one of the portrait photos, which you can tell they're portrait photos by the little icon on the right of the photo. Let's go with this one. If you go to the edit button, then you go to adjust and it allows you to adjust blur and depth. So if I go to blur, currently everything is in focus. I can go all the way to max just to show you the difference. The focus point is Julian's face and the entire background is blurred out like it would on an expensive DSLR lens. You can control the depth and how far the subject is from the background. Or if you want everything in focus, you turn that off and then you go to zero. And now from Julian all the way to the back, everything's in focus. It's pretty cool. But for this one, I think a lot of blur will work. You can also change the focus point of the photo. So if you have blur to 100, just to make it a bit obvious for you, if I tap the back, the back is in focus. And now I just go to depth. I can make Julian completely out of focus. To switch it, just tap on the subject and then it changes it right up. There is color focus, which is a bit tacky to be honest. Uh, it's where it desaturates everything but the subject. I'm not really a fan, so let's just turn that off. Oh, I accidentally took these photos in portrait mode, which I didn't even know you could do without a human subject, but they look pretty cool. If you look really closely, you can tell where Google's trying to simulate the depth of field, but generally they look pretty good. The next cool feature is what they call portrait lighting. This feature works on any portrait photo you've taken on a Pixel, so you can do this with your Pixel 4. Same as before, go into the photo and hit edit, and then adjust portrait light. So as you can see, there's a focus ring right here. I'll turn it up to max just so you can see the full difference, but basically it simulates a light around the subject. Pretty cool, right? The closer you bring it to the subject's face, the brighter it gets but you can also move the light to wherever you want. So I can move it down to the bottom left and there's light coming up this way. If you hit auto, it puts it usually in the best location, which is the top most flattering locations for a light. So I'll hit auto, it'll go up there. It doesn't matter where you are, what lighting situation you're in, now you can simulate light with this new feature. Next, let's talk about night mode. It's super handy when you're in the lower light situations. So in the camera app, slide it all the way to the end and hit night shift. It automatically detects the light situation for you and how long the exposure should be. It's available in the wide lens, the normal lens, and zoom. It's also available in the front cam too, which is a new feature on the Pixel 5. With night mode, if you hit the settings, you can bring up astro options. So as you can see here, there's an astro function. We out here. <laughs> With the boys. You can't see anything. There's Julianos. And then the other guys over there. Yeah. <laughs> Had a few views, eh? <laughs> We're shooting Astro. I'm gonna shoot some Astro mode uh, with the Pixel 5. There's heaps of stars. You can't see shit, but um, I'll take some photo samples with the Pixel 5. Got a little phone holder. That's the Pixel 5 on a tripod. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so you're in the camera app, yeah. and then you go to night shift, and it should go from a moon to stars. That means astro mode is on. Yeah, you just aim it at the stars and shoot, eh? For astro, the focus is important because the stars are so far away. So I would suggest you set this manually. So bring up the options. There's near and there's far. So astro photography, since the stars are literally the furthest away you can actually get, don't let the camera decide because in low light situations, sometimes it can't figure out what's going on. So go to the settings and click the far option for focus. Taking four minutes, gives you a little timer, tells you to keep still. And I think it takes a 15 second exposure in brackets, I think. And then we'll do it just like AI thing to kind of clean it up. It's cool that it shows you a preview of what's going on. Two, one. These are the results straight out of camera, no edit. Pretty insane, hey? It's pretty crazy that a tiny little Pixel 5 can shoot astro photos like this. All you really need are clear skies, a tripod, and four minutes. It does take a few tries, however, as not all the images come out clean. This one's a bit muddy, for example. Here's a quick color grade just to show you how it looks edited. So that about wraps it up. I hope this little camera test and review helps. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Let me know what you'd like me to test and review next. Like, comment, and see ya. <laughs> Get in shoe leg perspective shots. <laughs> and then we're gonna come back here. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs>